Okay, what we want to do is try to write net ionic equations um, for these different reactions. I believe they're all going to be double replacement reactions. Um, and so the first thing we need to do is um, we have chromium-3 chloride reacting with sodium hydroxide. So the first thing we need to do is write the equation to begin with, right? So um, we need to make sure that we have our periodic table with our oxidation states. Um, some of these are oxyanions, so we also need to have a list of your oxyanions with your oxidation states as well. So chromium-3 uh, means that we have an oxidation number of plus 3. And we know chlorine has a 1 minus, right? So that means we need um, 3 chlorines, right? And these are all going to be aqu aqueous solutions. Um, and then sodium, of course, has 1 plus or positive 1 oxidation. And hydroxide is an oxyion. He has a minus 1. So this is going to be NaOH. And remember, they're all aqueous solutions. And so basically, um, they switch partners, double replacement switch partners. Um, so typically, um, your chromium, your first el element in this one will go to your second element in the second um, compound. So um, this is going to be chromium hydroxide and it is going to also have sodium chloride. Okay, so now we need to make sure it's balanced. Um, so we have three chlorines here, but we only have one over here, so I need three here. That means my sodium is now a 3, my hydroxides are 3, so I should be okay just by putting a 3 here. Okay, so now um, that's the first step. Now the second step is to go ahead and kind of notice our solubility rules. So these are probably pretty good to have handy, um, have a cheat sheet in front of you, um, get to know these solubility rules. Um, because um, uh, this double replacement reaction is only going to occur if we have an insoluble part, which means we will have a precipitate. Insoluble means that it will not turn to aqueous. It will um, come out as a solid. So um, we do know that hydroxides are slightly soluble. Um, so he's going to be questionable. So salts with hydroxide are slightly soluble. But we do know that salts with um, chlorine are very soluble. So we definitely know that this will stay aqueous. Now, slightly soluble, um, that means they can um, stay as an aqueous solution or they can also precipitate out. Um, these are slightly soluble, um, and so we're just going to say this is going to um, come out as a solid. Okay, so now for our, um, before we get into our net ionic equation, um, we need to kind of look at what we're going to do is our ionic equation is only going to be um, the solid that is the product and whatever is also, first of all, let's do this. First of all, we're going to change this entire equation into its ionic form, ion form. So we have um, the chromium 3 plus and it's aqueous plus um, 3. We won't have any of the subscripts, so your subscripts come up as coefficients. Coefficients stay as coefficients. And we're just going to break them apart. And the only thing that is not broken apart is our, and don't forget to put your states in here, are our solid. So the, anything that is a solid over here that you're going to keep intact. And then, but we're going to keep breaking everything apart into its ions.
Okay, so now that I have that done, now we're going to take a look at our solid. And we're going to look, underline our solid. And then we're going to look on the left hand side and what, uh, which ones of our ions made up the solid. So the chromium ion and the hydroxide ion. So those are the only ones that are going to be dropped down. So we have our chromium ion plus our three hydroxide ions to make the chromium hydroxide precipitate. And this last part is our net ionic equation. Okay, so we're gonna practice again. We're gonna go down and we're gonna do another one. And this one is silver nitrate with ammonia carbonate. Um, so the first thing is silver um, nitrate has a oxidation state of, of minus one. Silver has a one positive. Ammonium um, has a positive one, and a carbonate has a two minus. Okay, so those are kind of critical things to do. Um, okay, so then silver nitrate is going to be silver's Ag, and nitrate is NO3. And remember, your, your oxidation numbers have to add up to zero. Um, and of course, this is going to be aqueous. Plus, now ammonium is NH4. And I need two of those to balance out, to make him a two, two plus to balance out your carbonate. And of course, this is going to be a double replacement. Um, so um, silver is going to go with carbonate. So we're going to have silver. Um, and I need there once again is um, oxidation number is a one plus and carbonate is a two minus. So I need two of those. And then we will have um, actually ammonium, ammonium nitrate. So this is going to be, and ammonium is one plus, and nitrates are one minus. So this is NH4, NO3, NO3. Okay, so now we need to balance. So let's go ahead and balance. Um, I have two ammonium, so I need to make a two here. And a two here. Let's see if that worked out. So two, two, yep, so that should be okay. So now I have to figure out which one, if any of my products are going to be the precipitate. So um, any um, anything typically with a nitrate is going to be soluble. So salts containing nitrate are generally soluble. Um, this is ammonia nitrate, so that's not really a salt, but definitely anything that has a carbonate is going to be insoluble. So this will be our precipitate, and this will say aqueous. Okay, so um, now we're going to break our balance equation into its ionic equation. So we have two silvers and of course always carry your states with you um, these are oxy anions so they stay kind of intact when you write them down so we have two nitrates plus we have two ammoniums and ammonium was a one plus, and of course is aqueous. And then we have a carbonate, 
and that's going to produce and of course your solid stays intact And I might have to put him down a little bit. Okay, so now, now what I want to do is plus um, two of our ammonias. Um, which are aqueous, and then plus two of our nitrates, which are also aqueous. Okay, so then um, we look at our solid, and which of our ions made up our solid. So we had our silver ions, and we had our carbonate ions. And so that is the only one that I actually write down. So two silver ions plus a carbonate ion made our solid of silver nitrate. And there we have our net ionic equation. Okay, so let's do another one. And once you get the hang of it, it's, it's pretty easy. Um, it's pretty um, nicely going. Um, I'm going to move this down. Give me more room, I think, is what I need. Okay, so we have um, cop copper um, to sulfate. Um, so copper 2 has a 2 positive, sulfate is a 2 minus, um, mercury 1 is a 1 positive, but nitrate is a 1 negative. Now there is something a little bit tricky about the, nit the um, mercury 1 nitrate, um, which we'll find out in a minute. It's kind of a weird. Um, okay, so copper, copper sulfate. So um, oh, CuSO4, and remember these are aqueous, plus mercury is Hg, but we actually, even though we have mercury, since it's a liquid, it comes in um, diatomic always, um, so we have a 2 here. And remember, this is a double replacement, so we're going to get a copper nitrate. Um, and so this would be a copper nitrate. And of course, I need the two of them because um, copper is two positive nitrate, so one minus. Um, and then our mercury, whoops. And then our sulfate. Okay, so now we got to figure out, okay, um, which, if any of our products are precipitate out. Um, so salts with um, nitrates are generally soluble. Um, and then um, salts with sulfate, most salts with sulfate um, are also soluble, except mercury is very insoluble. So even though salts with sulfate are generally soluble, he's, co he's combined with mercury, and mercury are, um, is insoluble. So this is going to be our precipitate, and this would be our aqueous solution. Okay, so now we do our ionic equation. So we have our copper, and that's aqueous, 
plus our sulfate ion, which is aqueous, plus our um, two mercury ions, plus our two nitrate, ions. And remember anything that is a solid you keep intact. And then we have our copper ion plus our two nitrate ions. And then, um, whoops, and remember always, even though we tend to a lot of writing, we don't necessarily want to do it. Um, it's very good habit to carry all of your states around with you. Okay, and then of course, keep your solid intact. Okay, so then um, circle or underline your solid and then underline the elements that made that solid. And that comprises our that comprises our net ionic equation. Whoops. And then plus our sulfate. Okay, and my writing tool decides to kind of freak out on me. Okay, so here we go. And there is our net ionic equation. Okay, last one. Okay, so we have strontium nitrate and reacting with potassium iodide. So strontium has a um, positive two Nitrate has a one minus. Potassium, of course, is a one plus, and iodide is a one minus. Okay, so that's the first thing is kind of get to know your oxidation numbers. So strontium is a SR, and nitrate NO3, and we're going to have to have two of them. And remember, these are aqueous plus um, potassium, Ki, and aqueous. Okay, um, double replacement. Um, so strontium iodide plus a potassium nitrate. Okay, so I need two here and a two here. Okay, so now I need to know my solubility rules. Okay, so salts with iodine or iodine are generally soluble, um, except if they're kind of with um, with silver, lead, mercury, um, they tend to be more insoluble. Um, so these are generally soluble. Um, and anything salts with nitrate, I've lost my thing, are generally soluble as well. So both of these, and strontium is just a typical um, alkaline earth metal. So I would assume this would be typically um, soluble. The only time they tend to not be soluble would be insoluble is when you have kind of some of your transition metals and so forth. So this would be soluble and nitrate soluble and of course potassium's in that same category as the alkaline alkaline earth metals. So both of these are soluble. So both of these are going to be aqueous. 
So no preci precipitate forms. So we have no net ionic equation. Okay. Um, so really uh, no reaction occurs. They just stay as aqueous solutions. I hope this helped.